This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate fly sim hardware solution. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It's early March 2021, we've got a new F117 flyable mod out from Jinx. You can see this is his Facebook here and you can find that pretty easily yourself, but I will also give you a link in the video description to this link here, which is his Google Drive for the actual mod. If that link changes and gets corrupted at some point, rather than asking me, please just come back to Jinx's website and he will probably have a new link there. I'm gonna click on it there. There are two folders that we need, this and that. You won't need the readme here. So for each of them, I'm gonna click right click and then I'm gonna click download. Give that a good minute or so for each of these things to download. Once they've both downloaded, you'll see if you've got Windows 10, it'll have these little guys at the bottom left here. I'm going to open up that arrow there. I'm going to say show in folder. My apologies for having such a big folder, but it's just very busy at the moment. Here are the two files we're interested in. They are zip files. So first, this lower zip file here, double click on it, and then we're going to right click on the folder, this folder here. I'm going to go copy. Then I'm going to bring up a new browser. Uh, in fact, I think I've got a spare one somewhere. Here we go. Then I'm going to go to my saved games folder. For me, that's C drive. Users, yours will probably be very similar. My user. Saved games, for me, DCS Open Beta, it may just be DCS for you. Mods folder, if you don't have it, make it and call it exactly that, please. Within that aircraft, if you don't have that folder, please make that exact folder. And right click, paste, give that a few seconds. We now have the basic mod, the F117 Nighthawk mod folder inside our mods folder. In our saved games, good. Now time for the next bit. We need to go and find our actual DCS installation directory. Now, if, if this is Steam, this is going to be a bit different. I don't have the Steam version, and I've always asked you guys not to own the Steam version, so I can't help you if you have. We're going to go to eDrive, where I've got mine. I'm going to go DCS World Open Beta. I'm going to go to Bazaar. I'm going to go to World Shapes. I'm going to find F117. There it is. And the one I'm interested in is that one there, f-117.edm. EDM is just a 3D studio file. We need to back this up. If you don't do this, you will corrupt your DCS and it won't be good fun. So right click, copy it. I'm going to go to my D drive. I'm going to go to backup and I'm just going to plonk it in there for safety. Paste. OK, next we're going to get back to our downloads folder. We're going to go for the second zip in there, in there. There is the new f117.edm. I'm going to right click, copy, and just make sure I did this right. I need to go back into the bazaar folder. So E drive, DCS world open beta, bazaar, world, shapes, right click, paste. We're going to replace the destination. And that's it. Those are the two steps, including the backup, that you need to do to install the Jinx F117 mod. Note that this originally came from Hawkeye, I think I noticed on the ED forum. So he would need crediting two. Let's shut everything down. Let's run DCS. Note I'm using the latest open beta version at 2nd of March 2021. We're in DCS now. I'm in the mission editor. I've started a new map on Persian Gulf for a new mission. First thing I'm going to do is put in an F117. I'm going to click Add or Modify Aircraft Group. I'm going to click it there. I'm going to make it from this list, F117A. If it's worked, it should show that in the yellow. I'm going to make this guy a client. I'm going to make him starting from ramp so that his engines are cold and he's on the ramp. I'm going to save it. And in I go. Blue Coalition, F117. In we go. The next thing we need to do is to set up our controls. Escape. Adjust controls. Now, interestingly, it uses the SU25T controls rather than its own set of F117 controls. So that's fine. We'll leave it on SU25T. If you've already got the 25T set up, then it probably will overwrite and ruin those controls. So that's fine. Let's start again. So with SU25T selected and all selected here, for all of our devices except keyboard, we want to erase everything because almost certainly it's had a guess at what to add in and it's probably got it wrong. So wing wing joystick one, delete. Wing wing joystick two, clear category, delete. Wing wing throttle, clear category, delete. Thrust master rudder pedals, delete. And that's all we need to do. Also into axis controls, delete the devices as well. Clear category, go. And thrust master rudder. Now we're going to go in and add the controls. I'm not going to show you every control because there's no need to. If you want to know which controls you need to set, please go and watch my seven minute video of how to set the SU25T up in terms of controls and it will show everything you need. I'm going to go and do it now off camera. So that's all of my controls set up. Let's go OK to that. 
first thing we'll do is arm up in case you don't know with that command there Ping. we can adjust the fuel load we can change our livery even though we've only got one livery at the moment and we can adjust our bombs it can carry up to two bombs they can be laser guided gbu 10 12 or 27 i'm just going to go for 12 to keep it relatively small uh to arm up you need your canopy open and your engines off and spool down which is why we're doing it now request rearming copy in terms of starting up right shift and lima to turn our electrics on you should see the hud come on now we're going to do the left engine start command that we bound earlier on on it goes that will take a little while to spool up speed up time you can hear it spooling up while the first one's spooling up we're going to do the right engine start I've pressed that button, let that one spool up, done. Let's look at the cockpit. In terms of instrumentation that works, nothing in here is clickable. I can get my little mouse here and I can click everywhere, nothing actually clicks. Some of the instruments are passive. ADI works passively, accelerometer works passively, not speedo works passively, HSI works passively, altimeter does not work, angle of attack does not work, whatever that is does not work. So that accelerometer does not work, that does not work. I don't think this works, but I stand to be corrected. That definitely doesn't work, and I'm not sure if these guys do. The MFDs do not do anything, you can't click on them. They're just basic uh, JPEGs that are there. They don't actually do anything, and nothing else here clicks. The uh, stick should wobble if you move your stick. The rudders should wobble if you move your thing, and uh, the throttle will go forwards and backwards. And that's about it as far as copy interaction goes. It actually looks quite cool. It's a shame the floodlight doesn't work because everything looks, you know, looks fairly sexy. Left control Charlie will bring my canopy down, standard bind. In terms of movable surfaces, ailerons wiggle this uh, kind of tailor on here, which is pretty cool. Elevation done by the, the tail as well. Pitch, I should say. Bomb bay doors are operated with a speed brake, so don't remember, speed brake will allow the bomb bay doors like that. So, let's go taxi. In terms of movement and flight model, this is an SFM, a standard flight model. The same kind of model that an AI-controlled aircraft will use. It means it's incredibly simple, not realistic. So, take it with a pinch of salt. I'm going to use my rudders to uh, move on the ground when I throttle up. Ground movement will not be realistic in any way. A real plane would not move like this on the ground. I can't tip it up. Can't, you know, make any errors. It's kind of like noob mode. It's fine. Pressing the wheel brake button. Just going to backtrack uh, down this runway to get some more distance. My speedo at the top left and my radar altitude at the top right. Meters and kilometers per hour. It's just the HUD from the SU-25. The way, entire way this aircraft operates is the same as the SU-25T. So if you fly that already, which is the freely available aircraft, you'll already be able to fly this aircraft. per hour, 300 clicks per hour, rotate, airborne, gear up, G key, does have working flaps but I didn't need to use them, again once we're airborne it just acts as a standard flight model which is very simple and there's not much to say about the flight model, if I wanted to do some air to ground attacking with my two bombs I will press the 7 key, this will bring up my air to ground mode, now these are laser guided bombs. I cannot use my own designating laser, so I need to use a third party laser if I want to drop these bombs on a target, otherwise known as a buddy laser. What I'm going to do is jump into another server where I've got a buddy lasing some tanks, and I'll show you how, using a buddy laser, we can get these laser guided bombs on target. Welcome back. A new server with a target that's being lased by a buddy in front of us. We're going to visualize that target as that red smoke you can see there. We're going to press 7 to bring up the air to ground system we're going to press O in fact we're going to pause it so we've got more time to speak we're going to press O to bring up the EO system this is a copy of the Scraval forward looking EO system in the SU-25T I'm sure you're familiar with it already we're going to use the tar target designator slew keys to move the pipa onto the target we can zoom in and out as per the SU-25T Scraval once we're on target we will press the target lock button We'll lock onto that target there. We will now press the laser ranging button. You can see LR is flashing on the scraval there to show we are ranging. We then use the speed brake deploy button to open up our bomb bay doors. 
We're going to fly above the target. For azimuth guidance, we can use the carrot there. It will tell us if we're left or right off target. We're now going to wait for this arrow here to reach that guy there at which point when it's between that guy and that guy we'll have LA launch authority we can then drop the bomb with the fire weapon uh, button that we set up earlier so let's just wait for that to happen I want to be 10,000 feet or over ideally we're a little low here okay, on azimuth now just waiting for the arrow to drop below and LA launch authorized. Drop the bomb. Bomb dropped. Is it going to hit? It's guiding. It's guiding. That's a hit. Jack. That's pretty much it for the F117A mod at the moment. I hope you enjoyed that and see you later.